Hi everyone, I'm Ku from ACC Global. I'm the country of ACC Global Malaysia. Uh, I have a special guest today, uh, Mr. Jared Tong from SS University, and we will be discussing a few topics about UK. Um, hi Jared, do you want to introduce yourself? Okay. Hi, I'm Jared. I'm from UNICE of Essex, um, that is based in Malaysia, which is the Southeast Asia Regional Office. Okay. Thank you, Cool and uh, ACC Malaysia for inviting me for this opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, J Jared. My first question to you is that I understand that the uh, the quarantine uh, in the, in Malaysia is different from um, quarantine in the UK. So when our students arrive in the UK, how is it different from uh, from the Malaysian who have returned to Malaysia where they have to quarantine the hotel uh how, how is it different from the uk okay so in malaysia as you all know that um student i mean everyone that's coming back from the overseas they have to quarantine themselves 14 days in the hotels and the meals will be prepared by the hotels or the hospital basically um, and they cannot go out at all okay and also they will be have a, a pink tags on their hands to show that they are actually in quarantine but in the uk um Basically, uh, for Malaysians, uh, they don't have to quarantine themselves when they come um, from overseas. Okay, but however, um, you know, um, the difference between the Malaysians and the I mean quarantine in UK is that um, Malaysians, um, sorry, Malaysians basically they just they can quarantine from their accommodations or from their homes. So anyone that's coming back from overseas in the UK, they can just quarantine from their home comfortably. And at the same time, um, they can also go out for exercise, you know, to buy groceries, uh, to also visit friends as well. But of course, um, they still have to maintain social distancing as well. So these are the uh, major difference um, that uh, for quarantine in the UK. So in addition to that, um, the university also um, do not require students to quarantine when they arrive from the overseas. However, we strongly agree, encourage them to quarantine themselves for their and other safeties. Okay. So during their um, quarantine, self-quarantine in our um, on-campus accommodations, we will have food packages for the students to purchase. And also students can also um, purchase groceries from um, uh, Tesco online as well. So all these, um, all these resources will be available for students to assess to when they arrive on campus. Oh, that's very convenient for a student who is uh, going to the UK. And I know September intake just passed and yep. uh, there is a January intake coming up. And I understand that uh, Access is also offering a few courses in January. Uh, is there any courses you wish to shout out for January intake? Yes, um, actually there are actually a, 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 a huge variety of courses available for January intake and we just also announced the um, undergraduate as well. So there are a few courses that we want to highlight is first, um, because of the upcoming deadline in end of October, um, we have a SX MBA 100% scholarship from between 10% to 100%. So students just have to apply and then they will get a conditional offer if they meet our entry requirements first. So from there then also, um, once they got a conditional offer, our MBA director will contact the students for another interview. That there they will um, assess the students for um, how much they are worth for their scholarships as well. So students can get from between 10% to 20, uh, sorry, to 100% for the scholarship. So if students, let's just say, after the interview, they only get, let's just say, 40% scholarship um, from our MBA Dean's Award, then they are also eligible for our early MBA, um, early bird discount, which cost up to three thousand pounds but however the the um, early bird discount will be due in the end of october so that's why we do encourage students to apply as soon as possible okay in addition to that we also have a few postgraduate courses to introduce for so for example we have a um, few conversion courses for postgraduate such as um, the uh, applied data science, data science and its, and its application, and the um, artificial intelligence and its application. So all these um, scientific courses that we have we have just offered for January intake, um, a lot of people would think that you know you require to have a science background or at least um, a mathematical background. But however, we do not require students to have those backgrounds as well. So as long as students they have a degree and they get a, a second lower class. Um, honors or equivalent they will be eligible to study those degrees as well okay in addition to that um, we also have um, under courses in uh, computer science and electronic engineering business economics law uh, uh, yeah 
the example with that as well. And um, finally, I think the other thing I would like to highlight is that also we have a um, Master's of um, Science in psychology, which is also a conversion course. So if the a conversion course means that if you don't have any background in psychology or uh, business or anything, you, um, you are eligible to apply anyway, because as long as you get a second lower class, you'll be eligible to um, enter the courses for conversion course. Okay. Wow, well, it seems like there's a lot of financial aid via scholarship for the students who are eligible for it. And uh, my, my next question will be, um, you know, under this COVID situation, every parent will be quite concerned uh, when they send their kids overseas. And can you tell me what's the difference between uh, XX and uh, other universities in this COVID situation? How, how do you differentiate yourself? Okay, so first of all, I think um, one of the uh, major difference for SX and other UK institutions is that SX is not um, in any of the big city. So basically, we are close to London, which is about 45 minutes away by train. Okay, And our campuses is surrounded by parkland. So basically, students would not be um, um, encountering or mingling with people from um, Colchester town and anything. So unlike, you know, um, universities or institutions in London, Birmingham or Manchester, which is a city campus, um, they might need, they might be in, um, con just a, um, a man con connecting and also um, interacting with um, um, the, the public, the, yeah. Yeah, the public yeah. yes. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that is one of the uh, difference. And in addition to that, um, mm. University of Essex is also, um, at the moment right now, uh, we have a very low cases and there's um, no outbreak. This means that um, our it's not just our universities. Um, Colchester Town itself it's containing the the the, the COVID nineteen virus on campus. So students um, they I wouldn't say they don't have to worry so much. Students still have to practice social distancing if they are planning to arrive on campus. So that is one of the most important thing. Okay, because um, to to contain this virus is basically um, the individuals have to take responsibility for that as well. Yeah, so, totally, uh, totally agree with you that, you know, everyone have to do their own part, play their own part in terms of social distancing and maintaining uh, a good distance between uh, one to another. And if, if there's no need, extra, uh, there's no need to actually go out for uh, something that is uh, unnecessary, they, they should actually stay indoor. Yeah, but uh, if everyone who are keen, who are listening to this uh, video clip, and if you are keen to meet up with uh, Jared and his colleague, uh, they, they are attending our coming exhibitions, our virtual education fair. Uh, so please um, register with us and uh, you'll be able to meet uh, Jared and his colleague uh, on a one-to-one -one basis. Thank you, Jared. Okay, thank you so much, Pooh and the ACC Malaysia. Okay, and thank I you. hope everyone have a nice day. You too.